Now, in these problems we're going to face now, we have to take note of a few things. Firstly, the domain for theta is between 0 and 360. So that's all our answers need to be between 0 and 360 for theta. And that's what we want to do. We want to solve for theta. Now, the only problem is, is that when we're looking at our questions here, we're looking at tan of 2 theta. So what we've got to be careful about is looking at the idea is that when, if theta, if theta is between 0 and 360, and we're going to consider 2 theta, then 2 theta must be 2 lots of theta. If, well, 2 theta is 2 lots of theta. Then the domain for 2 theta must be between 0 and 270, which is 2 lots of 0, which is still 0, but 2 lots of 360 degrees, which is 720. So instead of considering just one revolution between 0 and 360, for 2 theta we must consider two revolutions. And we'll see why when we get down to our answers. But if we think about it that way, 2 theta being between 0 and 270, it allows us to get all the solutions and not miss out on them. So let's have a look. Again, we're going to find our related angle. So with this time, our related angle is going to be for 2 theta, though. So keep that in mind as well. It's not going to be for theta. Our related angle is for 2 theta. So again, we look at tan, inverse tan of root 3. So 2 theta is equal to pi on 6, and tan's positive in the first and third quadrants. Now, if we're considering two revolutions, though, that 2 theta is between 0 and 270, not only is it in the first and the third quadrant, but also the fifth and the seventh quadrant as well. So that's where we've got to be careful. We're going to get two, two revolutions. So we've got to consider four solutions. So 60 degrees in the first quadrant. So there's our uh, related angle in the first quadrant. In the third quadrant, though, we'd say 180 plus, one, plus 60 plus the related angle. So now, if we're in the, third, the fifth quadrant... Now, remember, well, the fifth quadrant is the same as the first quadrant. So it's just gone through... 360 degrees. So all we need to do is take our solution in our first quadrant, add 360 degrees to it. So 60 degrees, 360 plus 60. Well, there's our 60 and there's 420, which is 360 plus 60. So that's all we're doing. It's just adding uh, what happens if we get one revolution. And then the same thing for the solution in the third quadrant. We add 360 degrees to it. So 240 plus 360 gives us 600. So there's our solutions in our in the two quadrants for 2 theta. But remember, we want to find theta. So we need to get 2 theta back to theta by dividing by 2, which means every solution here gets divided by 2. Now, if we take note, 30, 120, 210, and 300 are all between 0 and 360 degrees. So that's how we start to get our solutions when we've got Two, ang two theta, or what we call a double angle as such there. So the angle's been doubled. And same thing, if we triple it or whatever we do, we have to consider more than one revolution as such. So that's what we want to do. We get our related angle from two theta, but consider four quadrants because it's, because it's two theta, we've got to consider that it can be more than one revolution for two theta. And then when we get to the end, we divide by... The two, and that gives us our solutions there. So let's have a look at another problem. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 1. So if that's the case, well, we know if it was just sine of theta is equal to 1, it'd be 90. So a related angle is 90, and that's the only place in the, the complete circle where we get sine of, theta, sine of something being equal to 1. Sine of 90 is 1. So... We have that situation. We're just going to add 360 because that's two. That's again the second revolution because it's two theta. So that gives us 450. But then we're going to divide by two. So sine of 40, sine of uh, when theta is equal to 45 or 225, we would get one. And you can again check that these answers work. Sine of two times 45, plugged in the calculator, gives you one. Sine of two times 25 should give you one as well. So we, we get those, we can check our solutions to make sure they work. Cos of 2 theta is equal to a half. Now I haven't done all the other working I've been doing, so we're getting back to the idea that 2 theta, the related angle there would be 60 degrees, and cosine is positive in the first, the fourth, the fifth, 
and the eighth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, we take 60 away from 360, gives us 300. And then for the other two quadrants, we add 360 to both of those solutions. So 360 plus 60 gives you 420. 360 plus 300 gives you 660. So there's our two other solutions for our two revolutions. And then we're going to divide by two. So 60 divided by two gives you 30. Divide by two gives you 150. Divide by two gives you 210. Divide by two gives you 330. And our solutions are between zero and 200, 360. So it gives us our correct values. This one, a little bit different again. 3 theta. So this time we want to consider three revolutions. So again, if theta is between 0 and 360, if we have that situation, then we multiply theta by 3 to give us 3 theta. So that's between 0 and 360 times 3 will give you 1080. So there's our three, there's our there's our three there's our three revolutions going right away through. So round once, twice, and then three times to give us back to one thousand and eighty. So we've got to consider three theta being between that. Now again, our related angle for three theta would be a half. So three theta, the three theta, the related angle for sine of inverse sine of a half would be 30 degrees but we're in the third and fourth quadrants because sine is negative so sine is negative there so 2 180 plus 30 gives you the 210 360 minus 30 gives you 330 so there's your two solutions if it was just theta if we ignored the three that would be if it was just sine of theta then that would be a related angle being subtracted from 180, uh, sorry, added to 180 and subtracted from 360 to give our solutions in the first and the, th the third and the fourth quadrant. But now we've got to consider all three revolutions because it's three theta. So add 360 to 570, that's uh, to 210 gives you 570. Add another 360 gives you 930 degrees. For 330, you add 360 degrees gives you 690. And then add 360 degrees gives you 1050. So these three are all in the third quadrant, or if we want to consider the third quadrant, seventh quadrant, and eleventh quadrant, but they're all in the same position. They would be the same position on the circle. 330, 690, and 1050 are all in the fourth quadrant. They're all in that same position. It's just done three revolutions. So you come in exactly the same position there every time. So we're in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Now, to get theta by itself, we have to divide by 3. So we divide 210 by 3, which gives you 70. Divide by 3 gives you 110. And notice all our solutions are ending up between 0 and 360 degrees, which we said all our solutions need to be. So we start to get more solutions when we start to be multiplying the angle there. But what it's actually doing is actually bringing more solutions into our uh, 360 degrees. So you've got to consider that when we do this. So again, manipulating 2 cos 2 theta minus 1 down to cos 2 theta equal to a half. So again, our related angle would be 60. And cos is positive in the first and the fourth. So in the fourth quadrant, we're getting 330 degree, 300 degrees because 360 minus 60. Add 360 to both of those, gives you the other two solutions. And because it's 2 theta, we divide by 2 to give us our other answers there. Again, a little bit of manipulation needed because tan squared of 3 theta is equal to 1. So we divide, uh, sorry, take the square root on both sides, and we get two solutions, two, two equations. Tan 3 theta is equal to 1, and tan 3 theta is equal to minus 1. Again, where's what's our related angle for inverse tan of 1, 45. And it's also positive in the third quadrant, so that's where we get the 225. Add 360 to both of the, to each of those solutions, and we do that twice. So we get 360 there, and then 360 again. 225 plus 360 is 485, plus, 360, plus 
360 again gives you 495. Divide by 3. All our solutions are between 0 and 360. 10 to 3 theta is equal to minus 1. So again, the related angle is 1, but 10 is negative in the second quadrant. So 180 minus 45, and it's negative in the fourth quadrant, which is 360 minus 45. So there's our two solutions in the first, rota first rotation, and then for revolution, and then add 360 for the second revolution to both of them, and add 360 to those solutions for the third one. And then 3 theta, there's our solutions for 3 theta, so we need to divide by 3 to give our solutions for theta itself. So we end up with 6 solutions in that. And again, substitute those back in. Put 45 back into that and square it. Put 225 into that, square it. Put 345 into that, square it. It should all work out to be one. If it doesn't, then we've made an error. There's something gone wrong, so we need to check our calculations. But for these ones, I'm pretty sure they're right. So you can check them yourself to make sure they are working well there. So that's how we, what we need to do when we have um, 3 theta or 2 theta or one and a half times theta, whatever the angle, and if we get a coefficient in front of our angle, we need to develop a way to get attack these problems and be able to get all our solutions that are going to exist between zero and 360 degrees.